Hi, and welcome to Match Moveful Production by VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this video, we'll be moving on to shot MM10. What we'll do first is we'll just play through the shot so we can see what we're going to track. Then we'll open 3D Equalizer. Okay, so we opened up 3D Equalizer. Um, and as you can see, we've got our basic user interface here. We've got all our windows open that we've used from the previous shots. Um, if you've not got this, you may see something like this, which is a not particularly useful. So what we'll do if we go to the bottom left where it says environments, and we'll select basic. And this will give us our basic user interface, give us all the windows and tabs that we need to complete our shots. So First of all, we need to load in our image sequence. So if you've downloaded a data package, that's great because you can follow through this tutorial step by step um, and it'll be a massive advantage to you because you'll have all the data to create your match move reel and so if you're just using it for the data and you want to put something CG in there, you'll have all the data as well to um, render some nice CG. So first of all, we'll go to the top left where it says sequence one camera and this is our sequence camera and we want to load in our image sequence. So if we go over to the right where it says live action footage, if you don't see this, you might be in a wrong tab, you might be in a different one, make sure you're in the camera one. And if we go to browse, then we need to navigate to our image sequence. So you should have MM10, post apoc, post apocalyptic. And if we click on plate and view HD, we should have some files in here. So if you click OK, and now it's loaded in and as you can see it's dark because all these uh, image sequences have been transcoded over to a linear color space so you don't have to worry about any of that it's all been done for you so what we need to do we, we can't really work like this so what we'll do we'll go over to our right and there's a tab here called 8-bit color conversion and if we click on the triangle it will open up what we want to do we want to go to our gamma settings and change this to 2.2 and this will bring us up to a more usable color space. So now we've got that done, we want to export out our image cache because at the moment, if we try and play through, it's very laggy and we can't, if we try to press space bar, it's not gonna play. So what we wanna do first, if we go to 3D4 at the left and I'll save our project first, I'm gonna make a file in here click OK and go to here and what I'll do I always call this the name of the shot just so I always know that this corresponds to this image sequence and if I come back to it a couple of weeks later I know exactly what it's for click OK now we need to go over to playback here and click on export buffer compression file and this will cache out all our images. So this may take a while so I'll probably fast forward this. Cool, so that's exported so our next step would be to import it. So if we click import buffer compression file, it should be much quicker. And now we move for a spacebar. We can play for our image sequence and everything looks great. Cool. So now we've done that, we want to set up our lens. So if you go to your data package and go to your camera data folder, you should have a notepad and it'll open up this. So in here, as usual, we've just got our camera and our sensor size and what lens we use. We, we're going to do all these, we've done all these shots with very minimal data, if nothing at all. And so when the time comes and you do get there, everything's a lot easier. So um, what I always do with our sensor size, I always put in the, the height and let the, the width figure itself out. So if you go to camera and go to all the way to the right, and you see we've got our film back width and height, and I'll leave the width on passive and we'll fill in the film back height with what was written down which is and you need to make sure that you put millimeters in there otherwise it will 
automatically think it's centimeters. So now it's converted it back over, and you can see it's it's figured out the correct uh, width. And so we've got that sorted now. That's our sensor size. And now if we go to our focal length, we're going to leave this at 30 because we're going to pretend that we don't know what it is. I know what it is, but we'll we'll go through this as we don't have any. So now we've done this. Our first step will be to bring in our set geo. So we can figure out our focal length. So if we go over to our left at point groups, click on the arrow, drop down. If we right click on 3D models and click add new and import OBJ file, we're going to go to your data package, click on set geo, and bring in the post box set geo. Click OK. You won't see anything because you need to be in the F5 menu. And you can see we've got some geometry here, but we can't really tell what it is. So if we click center models here on the left, it's now pushed us a bit further back so we can see some more. So now hold shift and right click. You can zoom out from it and you can rotate around and see what orientation we need to be. So what we'll do, we can see that we've got the crash barrier here. So we'll rotate around this way and we'll right click to zoom in. So when we're doing this, we need to sort of think, we we need a frame where we see the most <coughs> of our plates so we can get the best lineup as possible. And at the moment, we don't have that. So if we scroll through, we can actually go back and we can actually go right back to the first frame and we can see a lot here. So we'll try and get a rough lineup from the first frame. So we'll shift, right click, try and get this relatively close, but we're not going to get it perfect because it's the wrong focal. So now once we've done that, let's go to F2 and go back to our tracking menu. And what we want to do, we want to go find some significant points that we can survey to our geometry. So I'm going to go between, go between F5 and F2. So what we want to do, so we can see more detail on the geometry, we want to go select our set here and go to texture mapping, UV map. Now you want to go to your set geo, set texture, and bring in the texture for your set geo. Can't see anything yet because we need to turn off lines to show polygons. You can keep your lines on if you want, but it's just easier to see without them. And now we can see pretty much most of the detail that we can survey to. So I'm going to go to F2 and I'm going to find points. So I'm going to pick this little black splodge here, so I'm going to control left click. I'm not going to track it, I'm just going to leave as it is. I'm just going to go around and try and find significant points. So I can see this corner here, so I'm going to control left click. I'm just going to go across. So I'll try and get this bit here on the, the road marking, which I can just about see here. I'm just going to control left click. F5. Yeah. And we'll do the other one. So control left click. And what we'll do. Go there as well. And we'll get this other block here. Control left click. And see if we can see some bits on the ground. What we can do. We're seeing it quite uh, straight down. We'll see if we can rotate it around, see if we can see a bit more flat on to get a better look. So I'm just going to rotate it up so I can see a bit more of the ground. Get F2. See if we can see any of these like patches here. And I think this little patch of gum or wet patches is this patch here. It's a bit fainted, so I'm going to go I'm gonna control left click there. And I think that's that bit. So I'm going to go to F2. I'm going to select all my points by shift and left click. You can see I've got a fairly decent spread for a start. So what I'll do, I'll just start with this. So I'll select my first point. And that first point was this little black splodge here. So I'll go to F5. I can see it here. So I'll go extract polygon. And you see it's made this zebra line. 
what do you want and it will highlight the polygon but you want to try and get it as, as close to the black dot as possible so now we've extracted that polygon and placed that given that 2d point a 3d representation in 3d space by placing it in that point so we want to do this to all the other ones so we've got two and two is the corner of this block so extract polygon and select the corner of the block and we can always see we're starting to pull us down it's still a bit off but it will be because we're at the wrong focal length so go to f2 press f5 and this is that like t shape on the road marking so we will rotate it down so we can see it a little bit better we've extract polygon it's about here go for f2 and it's the other T shape on the road marking, which we can see a little bit clearer. Click extract polygon, and it's flipped over. So, what we can do is go to F5. So, obviously, our view. So, if we can hold shift and left click, we can try and bring it because sometimes it's, if we've got the wrong focal length. These lineup points are going to do something a bit funny. So what we do, we hold shift and left click to sort of bring it back round. And if we have, if we select our fifth point, extract polygon, check in F2 and it's on the corner of that bit, which is like here. It's still going to look funny. And it keeps flipping over, which is not great. So we go to F2. And we know this is the corner of that other block. So we go to F5. Oh, we can go to F6, rotate round with our left click, and we can just, just double check. So we go back, actually go back to F5, and we'll rotate it to it around again. Oh, and it's come back. So we've got it back in the sort of reasonable place. So with our sixth point selected, we'll go extract polygon, double check. Oh, we're on the wrong frame somehow. That might be why it's gone funny. So if we go match frame, no, it's still gone funny. It's all right. So if we shift and rotate around, this is the sort of odd effects that you'll get if you're at the wrong focal length. So we've got that and we'll extract that now. And it's popped it back. So if we go to our seventh point, which is that little splodge that we found. So that's here, so you can see that shape, this, this pair of splodges. We'll extract polygon and we'll place that there. So obviously it's looking absolutely awful at the moment. So what we'll do, because we're at the wrong focal length, we'll go to the lens. We'll go to focal length and we'll click fixed and change it to adjust. Now we'll go to windows, parameter adjustment window and change brute force to adaptive and click adjust and this is going to adjust the focal length to the best fit of our survey and we can rely on this quite well because we know that where we surveyed it is, is is pretty accurate so if we transfer the parameters we can see it's not changed anything until we press alt c and it brings up this dialog window which shows us our single keyframe of our single tracks and our yellow points of our 3d points click use result we can see it's popped into a logical space so if we click on 3d models and flick between that's pretty much pretty much perfect it's probably a little bit off from the distortion so now we know we've got a focal length of 18.54 we can probably guess that we can bring in the lens grid, uh, the 18 mm lens grid. So if we go back up to our camera from the top left, select it and click right click, and click add new, reference, make sure you select reference camera, double click on your reference camera. And what we're gonna do, we wanna go to live action footage and click browse. Now you wanna navigate to your lens grids and deselect sequence view so you can select your 18. So for 
18.54, so it could be between 18 or 19. Um, I'll just pick 18, click OK. Now we've got a lens grid, but now we want to go to F3, and this will bring us to our distortion menu. So what we want to do, we have this uh, red rectangle with lines and dots, which is our distortion matrix. So if we click and hold this top left one, we'll notice that the zebra lines so when they, the zebra lines pop up, just let go and it will snap to the corner. And we want to do that to these four, these three corners here. So we'll pick this corner here as well. So now we've got three points on these corners. And if you've got a lens grid that's shot really clearly, like this one, you can just click snap and it will pop into place. So now we need to completely fill this lens grid. So holding control and press up, we can start adding more rows to the column. And the same with control down. Now we have one central column filled out. Then we need to fill out left and right as well. So if you hold control left, go all the way to the edge and control right. And that's pretty much them. If you've gone if you've gone over, say you've gone too high, 3D will automatically know that these are not in the, the field of view, so they'll disable them straight away. But if you want to delete them, hold shift and press up. And that's the same for any direction. So if you've got too many on the left, hold shift and left. So now we've done this. This is pretty much done and we want our lens grid to look like this. We want to go up to the top where it says calc. You click calculate, calc distortion and camera geometry. And you don't need to change anything here. You just need to click, click lens, calc lens parameters. And it will fill out, it will figure out all the distortion values. And it will tell you if it's got a low deviation value and we've got pretty low. We've got a lens grid with shot fairly square on. So if we set parameters and close, we see nothing's happened. So but we, if we click undistort here, we can see how much distortion we're removing from the image. So now we're done with this distortion grid. If we go back to our sequence camera at the top left and double click on it, we can now see how much distortion has been removed from our image sequence quite a lot so if you now press f5 and press alt c to resolve you can see it'll pop into place so now if you click the 3d models the lineup is practically perfect we can try and improve it let's add some more extra points so let's see if we can see any extra ones we want to add So we can just about see this little patch here. So control left click, press F5. If we turn our 3D models on, we can see where it's just about there. Extract our polygon to there. And what we want to do, we want to go to our parameter adjustment window, clear it, and adjust it one more time. So it's going to give us a slightly different value now we've got the distortion off. So if we transfer the parameters, you can see it's slightly changed. And press Alt C, use result. And if we flick between two, they practically line up absolutely perfectly. Cool. So now we can go to our 3D model. If you select a 3D model here, we can turn on our lines and turn off our polygons. So now we can see the wireframe. And then we can see it's pretty close. It's pretty much bang on. And this is what we want to get. So now we're done with the, getting this lineup pretty much perfect. We want to store our pose and this will make a keyframe at the first frame that if you lose your uh, position somehow you can recall it but remove poses right next to it so don't click on that by accident. But what we'll do we'll store away our points so we don't lose our position so we can always come back to it if we lose our pose. So if we select the top one top point and hold shift and select the bottom one we can select all of them so if you click right click and add new, and select point set, and we'll call this SF, click OK, it's SF for single frame, and if we select all our points again, and hold the middle mouse roller, and drag and drop it under that. So now what we need to do, we go back into our, S, our single frame folder, and with, all, with them all selected still, if we right click on them, we need to go to modify, calculation, and disable them. Because if we leave these on, there's going to cause havoc with our soul later on, and we don't want them on. 
and we also don't want to see them so if we go to view here and click hide selected points and that's pretty much it for our lineup we've got a really good lineup everything's working so our next thing is to start tracking it so if we go to f press f2 we can now start tracking points so we want to start we want to pick points that we can see throughout the entire range so let's scrub through and just see what we can see because they're going to give our best results so if we can go here select this little bolt we want to reduce our tracking area so it doesn't see that one if we click gauge marker and track and you can see it's floating around like mad because we're not on center 2d so if we click center 2d we can now see that we're pinned on it you can see it's working pretty well so we can get rid of this uh, crosshair in the middle so this is for our lens centers so if we go view show fov it kind of gets out of the way and it's not so annoying so we'll just go through and we'll track bits and pieces we'll get this this uh, junk um, this marking here we'll get gauge marker and track you see there's quite a bit of inertia um, just uh, blur in here from the shaky handheldness so it will be a bit tracks won't be absolutely perfect but they'll be good enough as long as they're staying in the right area So what I'll do is start from the first and go all the way to the end and find a point at the end. Then I'll track back from that. So if we click gauge marker and track, and I'll start to track backwards. See it's getting quite quite wobbly there. here as well so we'll reduce our search box because it might jump over and think that's also the point the air retracting or sorry so we'll gauge mark on that and track and you can see that's pretty good we want to avoid anything that's got the reflection on the water because if you look at it if you look at the reflection of the water you can see that it sort of changes there's stuff going through it so we want to try and avoid tracking stuff like this so you can see the color and the, the shape of the changes so let's uh, look for other bits to track this is Squatch here right on the edge, gauge marker and track. See how this changes here with the, the reflection of this part of the roof or the, the barrier, sorry. Got a lot of stuff to track that's easy to track but we want to pick stuff that's going to be really useful to us could track something up here let's try that so we'll select that gauge marker and track it's quite dark and grainy up there so it might jump around seems to be fine See that? You don't see that pillar all the way to the end. So let's have a look at our whole point spread. So I select all our points. Let's see what our spread's like. It's very central. It's not particularly great. Um, so we'll get some more. So let's track this bit here. No, it doesn't last the entire frame range, but you know what? it's slipping off. So it's probably something to do with the reflection. See how it changes there. Well, actually, if we go back to the first one, we can do try and track this black splodge. It might be a bit too faint. 
Let's see what we got. Gage Mark and Track. Oh, it comes off. So you need to make sure if you don't end that point, it's going to do this. And if you leave a point that's doing that on the edge of your frame, it's going to it's going to destroy everything. So we need to make sure if it starts going off, go back a couple frames and end the point so it turns off. It's really important that you do that because that will just wreck all your work if you don't. This bit here, because we know we've lined up to that bit, it's worked pretty well. So if we gauge marker and track, sort of see that's working pretty nicely. <coughs> it is jittery from the, the inertia blur. What we can do, we'll try and get something that's down here as well. So if we can go to our is it because we've got quite a lot there's not that much contrast so if we go to our windows we'll go to image control window and we bring up this window and we click enable image controls enabled and click color controls enabled let's see if we can actually bring a little bit more detail on this ground just so there's some more options that we can track that we may have not been able to see So let's track something here. Gauge that marker. Track. Obviously, this is not going to last the entirety of the frame range, so we'll have to find something that overlaps with it as it goes out. Here. This might be a bit too much generic detail here, but we'll gauge mark and try it. And it goes off, so we'll just end it before it goes off. something like this here see how well that tracks it may not track very well See this tiny little bump there? See that? See how it pops off? You want to go back a couple of frames before it does it. Resize your tracking box and gauge marker again and track. Hopefully it won't do it again. Cool, so now if we if we can turn off our image controls. What we're gonna do if we go back to F5 select all our points and we can get edit project points on 3d models and 11 of 11 have projected so if we now go control C, oh, sorry alt C to solve it now it's opened up our solving dialog window that shows us our keyframes on our camera and you can see see all our keyframes you can see it's a hand very handheld movement you can almost see the 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 walking stance so it's like left foot right foot left foot right foot left foot right foot and walking round and then you can see uh, our 3d points so if we click use result it's not too bad it's got it's got a ramp up which we need to sort of flatten out 
but the general gist of it, it's not got anything crazy. This is a little bit sharp in the middle, but um, I would say that this is probably something to do with tracking. So if we, first of all, uh, Reese, uh, do another parameter adjustment on our focal length. Clear that and adjust. It should change a little bit. If we transfer the parameters and press Alt C again. See, it's not really changed much. So what we'll do, we'll go to our deviation browser. We're kind of missing some stuff here though. So if we look at all our points, they're kind of not, they're actually not that well placed for the first part. But so what we can do, we can get some more in here. Engage, uh, track. Just so we can figure out that sort of section. I'm not sure if it'll make much of a difference now. So we can go back to F5, project that back on. Alt C. It sort of brought it up a bit. It's not really made much of a difference. So what we want to do, we actually go to our deviation browser and go show point deviation curves. And go active points only. Now we can see what points do and what, and what are the ones that are kind of causing us problems. We can see here we got this one really high. It's the one that we projected up here. And it's a little bit of there's we haven't got any geo for the top, so I'd say it's probably a fairly uh dubious place to place it. So what we do, we'll right click and go to we'll right click, go to modify, go to survey, and survey for it. So now we press Alt C to resolve it. And we'll see where that puts it. So now it's completely flattened us out. And now we've got this other little spike. I think that's the one we added. So we also we'll survey through that. And now what we'll do got this sort of spike here. I imagine this is probably because of the jerkiness in the in the plate. So what we'll do, we'll go back to our focal length adjustment, clear that, and we'll adjust it again. See our deviation value is getting lower and lower. So now we'll Alt C on that. So what we do, because we can see there's quite some large spikes, and then we can look at our tracking. And you can see it's jumping around every time it blurs. Um, we can manually track that, but if we look at our, three, if we just select our center 3D. 3D point is sort of figured it out. So now if we pre if we just go full frame and press space, we can have a look at our solve, check if there's anything slipping off. Railings looking pretty good. All these pillars are lining up pretty much perfectly. So we might need to add something a bit down here on the left. So if we go to F2. And try and find something because we've got nothing here. Gauge marker. Just because we've got no overlapping with this one probably a good idea to have then because suddenly there's nothing there. So we go to F5 and we can edit project points from 3D models, click OK, press Alt C, huge result. You see it's kind of made us ramp up so what we'll do we will do our focal length adjustment again see if that changes anything and if not what we'll do we'll go to right click on it and we'll go to modify survey and approximately survey and press Alt C. You can see how that's flattened it out. So now if we go a full frame and press space bar, we see we've got a nice spread of points all over the ground. So anything you put here on the ground is going to stay pretty much perfectly now. If you're around, if you look in on the, if you have anything parked here or some stuff put in there, it's going to sit pretty nicely. 
cool. So we are done now with uh, the 3D equalizer side of it so far for the tracking. There are three other things that we need to do. We need to export our camera out. We need to export a, a nuke LD node and we need to render off a D lens uh, underscore display. So what we'll do first, we'll save it. Before we, but before we save it, we'll just double check our geo. So if we select our geometry, our set geo, go to 3D model, and we'll make sure set ref is reference only is checked. So now what we can do, we can go to 3D, save project as, and we will, I'll just save over the top. Now what we want to do, if we go to export project, Maya, we want to make sure our start frame is the start frame of our image sequence, uh, and then export file. And we need to call it the same name as our image sequence so we don't get it mixed up or any confusion between cameras. Because if you come back to this a couple of weeks later and you don't know what it is, you don't know what it is. So, have naming everything relevant to what they are is, is really useful. Cool, so I'll call that post.bg01, camg01, and I'll, I'll just right click and copy this, so I'm probably going to have to type this a couple of times. That's that exported. So now if we go to File, Export, Nuke LD Node, and click on the file name, if you right click and paste, we want to change cam to Nuke LD node and this will be the distortion node that the compositors will reapply to any CG after they finish their comps. Then lastly we need to go to 3D4 again and run warp 4. So if we go to our right and click save footage, change our scale to 50% then we can switch over to warp footage and click preview. Then we click between two and we can see how much it changes. So now we need to go to browse. We'll go to our directory we want to save. Save it in here. You need to make sure it's a new directory, otherwise, you'll fill up your files up with loads and loads of images. So, so I'll just call it the same. And I'll select all this, right click and copy. So, I have to type it again. I'll go into the group, I'll do a right click and paste. And what you need to do, you need to make sure you put dot four hashes dot exr. Otherwise, it won't render out as an image sequence. It will just render one image. So click OK. And we, sorry, it's just looking at the wrong window. So what you need to do is you go over to save footage, browse, keep it as an open exr here. Change your scale to 50, and when you're and you go to browse, go to so if you so if you open up this. And if you click save footage, make sure your scale is at 50%. Open EXR is left. You can preview it. And you can click between two and you can see how much there's difference between the two. Then you want to go to browse. Go to the directory you want to save it. So I'll go to there. And I've made a folder already called post to park because you want to make a folder otherwise you'll fill your directory up with uh, images so now you want to call post underscore bg01 bg01 bhd 
UDP, you need to make sure that you put dot four hashes dot EXR. Otherwise, it won't recognize it as a frame range. So if you click OK, now you need to click render. And it will probably take a while, but you should get some little green keyframes coming up here now of each frame that's being rendered. So it should be coming any moment now. Cool, so you've got these rendering out now. So what I'll do, I'll fast forward this. So that's rendered out now. So we can go file and exit. And we're pretty much done in 3D now. We've done, we've completed this shot. Um, it's working really well. So yeah, we'll move on to Maya and set it up. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.